Having the king of pop for a father gave Paris Jackson a complicated relationship with fame. But after some early struggles and soul-searching, she's transformed into a gorgeous, talented woman and a star in her own right. Paris Jackson and her brothers, Prince Michael and Bee Gee, grew up on Michael Jackson's sprawling Neverland Ranch estate near Santa Barbara, California. During the seven years they lived there, their dad kept them so sheltered that Paris had no idea he was a global superstar. As she told Rolling Stone, I just thought his name was Dad, Daddy. We didn't really know who he was, but he was our world, and we were his world. Whenever they left home, Michael made them hide their faces behind masks and veils. During a 2011 appearance on The Ellen DeGeneres Show, Paris admitted she wasn't a fan of the practice saying, I'm like, this is stupid, why am I wearing a mask? But she later came to appreciate what Michael was trying to do. In a 2012 appearance on Oprah's Next Chapter, Paris said they only hid their faces when they were with their father. When we went out without him, we wouldn't be recognized and we could have a normal childhood. At times like that, Paris and her brothers could act like normal kids at two places they loved to visit, Toys R Us and Chuck E. Cheese. Paris wasn't allowed to ride Neverland Ranch's amusement park attractions, which included a Ferris wheel, carousel, and train whenever she pleased. Instead, the rides, petting zoo, and theater were rewards. She explained to Rolling Stone, if we were good, every other weekend or so, we could choose whether we were gonna go to the movie theater or see the animals or whatever. Paris and her brothers were homeschooled for many years, but didn't feel like they were missing out because they loved spending time with their dad. When I grew up, we were always on the move, couch surfing, hotel hopping, always traveling with our dad. She recalled, we were like, we don't need friends. We've got you and Disney Channel. Paris also had her siblings to play with. In a 2019 Vogue video, she and Prince Jackson reminisced about the time a game of hide and seek on a Neverland stage in total darkness resulted in Paris suffering a broken nose. You remember when you broke your nose on the stage and your eyes were like a raccoon? Yeah. You could do that again that was and your you won't have to do makeup. The Jackson children were also exposed to a wide variety of music, and Paris was quite the singer. She reminisced to the standard, it was cool seeing the look on my dad's face when he realized I could match pitch and harmonize. She told Harper's Bazaar that, as the only girl, Michael doted on her more than her brothers, saying, I was the princess. I was perfect in my dad's eyes. When Paris was 11 years old, Michael Jackson died from an overdose of propofol. Michael's mother, Catherine Jackson, became the children's guardian. In a 2016 interview with 60 Minutes Australia, Catherine described Paris's reaction to Michael's death, saying, Paris was screaming and crying and saying, I want to go with you, daddy. I don't want to live without you. Despite her fragile emotional state, Paris took the stage with the rest of her family at Michael's 2009 memorial service. Ever since I was born, Daddy has been the best father you could ever imagine. The speech was spontaneous. Speaking to Reuters, media historian Ron Simon predicted, that will be one of the iconic moments from today's service. It turns out Paris was remarkably media savvy for her age. She wanted to protect her father's memory with a preemptive response to Michael's critics. Eight years later, she explained to Rolling Stone, I knew afterward there was gonna be plenty of talking, plenty of people questioning him and how he raised us. After Michael Jackson's death, Paris Jackson didn't simply stop hiding her face behind a mask. She made plans for the world to see it on the big screen. In 2011, she was cast as the lead in a fantasy movie with an eco-friendly message, London's Bridge and the Three Keys. She promoted the film on The Ellen DeGeneres Show, saying that the story about caring for the Earth would have appealed to her father. She also shared that seeing Michael's 1988 movie Moonwalker inspired her to try acting, saying, I knew he could sing really well, but I didn't know he could act. I saw that and I said, wow, I want to be just like him. She and Michael did improvs together to develop her acting skills, and she could actually cry on cue. But Paris's aunt, Janet Jackson, didn't support her going to work at such a young age, explaining to Prevention, I told her I thought she should enjoy being a kid, possibly go to college, or not, but wait till she turns 18. Paris shared that Michael had wanted her to have a normal childhood given his own experience as a child star. Her first film, London's Bridge and the Three Keys, was set up but never made, which meant that Paris didn't make her official acting debut until 2017, with a four episode arc in the TV series Star, so Michael and Janet got their wish. Paris was by no means an average teen. In 2012, she appeared on People's Most Beautiful list, posing for a makeup-free photo. She told the magazine, My grandmother doesn't like it when I wear makeup. By then, she'd traded homeschool for the Buckley School, a private school in Sherman Oaks, California, and was making new friends. At the time, she shared, When I spend the weekend at my friend's house, we usually have one night where we wash our faces and use those nose things for our pores. They're really cool. At age 13, Paris became the first female member of her school's flag football team, playing linebacker. This led to an offer to be spokesperson for America's Lingerie Football League. Unsurprisingly, Catherine 
Karen Jackson found this highly inappropriate. A family source told Radar, a teenage spokeswoman for a lingerie league? That's just creepy and downright offensive. And Paris didn't just play football. In 2013, she was photographed rocking an edgy black bob while cheering for her school's basketball team. This earned her an offer to join the Philadelphia Eagles cheerleading squad. As the team's director, Barbara Zahn, told TMZ, Paris has that wow factor that makes a great cheerleader. According to Paris, her taste in music made her unpopular with her classmates. She told Glamour, The click in my class, they don't like me or my friend because we're outside of the box. We're not copycats. Prince calls me goth, but I'm more rock and roll. I listen to older music like ACDC. Bill Collins is the ish. Luckily, Paris had better things to do than worry about what the popular crowd thought about her, like calling out a rock star on X. After hearing Motley Crue bassist Nikki Six say something about her father that she didn't like, Paris wrote in a since-deleted tweet, Hey, quick question, dude. And this is coming from a huge fan of Motley Crue, but why do you feel the need to hate on talented people? Paris's tweet didn't go unnoticed by the rocker, who replied, My snarky humor and sarcasm sometimes gets the best of me. I sincerely apologize to you and your family. After a reported suicide attempt in 2013, Paris's public appearances became sparse. She spent some of her time in Utah, away from the spotlight, where she was attending a therapeutic high school. She told Rolling Stone, I was going through a lot of, like, teen angst and I was also dealing with my depression and my anxiety without any help. Yes, I tried to kill myself many times. When Paris started appearing in public again, it was often in the company of soccer player Chester Castellaw. The then 17-year-old made her relationship with Castellaw Instagram official in April 2015, and the pair walked their first red carpet together at the premiere of Deaf West Theater's Spring Awakening the following month. Castellaw even earned the approval of Paris's cousin TJ Jackson, who'd become her co-guardian. No one's perfect, but he's a good boy, so I approve. He treats her well. She's happy. In October 2015, an Instagram page bearing the name Paris Jackson Castellaw sparked rumors that the young couple had tied the knot. The account turned out to be fake, and two months later, the couple called it quits. According to a source quoted by Radar, Paris still will not tell anyone what happened to cause the breakup. She's kind of shutting everyone out when it comes to the topic. In 2016, Paris moved into the guest house of her father's Encino, California estate. On her 18th birthday, she got the words Queen of My Heart tattooed on her wrist in Michael's handwriting. In a since-deleted Instagram post, she wrote, To everyone else, he was the king of pop. To me, well, he was the king of my heart. A month later, Paris got the artwork from Michael's dangerous album tattooed on her arm. In June 2016, she added the title of his song Bad to her collection and explained why she's so fond of tattoos. In addition to appreciating the art form, she revealed that they've helped her heal from self-harm. Writing in Glamour, Today I can look at my inner forearms and see art that has meaning for me. I don't see a dark past anymore. My scars and past of self-hatred have been covered by loving marks, creativity, ingenuity, and depth. By the time Rolling Stone interviewed Paris in 2017, she had nine Michael-inspired tattoos. Paris seemed destined to be the next big thing in fashion in 2017. She attended her first Met Gala, scored a front row seat at a Paris Fashion Week show, signed with the prestigious IMG modeling agency, and partnered with Calvin Klein. After she hard launched her fashion career, she told Rolling Stone, Plenty of people think I'm ugly, and plenty of people don't, but there's a moment when I'm modeling where I forget about my self esteem issues and focus on what the photographer's telling me, and I feel pretty. In 2017, Jackson did a photo shoot in front of the Eiffel Tower for Harper's Bazaar and spoke about the stars she look to for style and spo. Now, now, I recently heard that you call your fashion grunge fairy core. Like many Gen Zers, she embraced throwback fashion. But whereas it girls like Bella Hadid were bringing back 90s trends, Jackson was rocking looks inspired by two female rock icons of the 60s and 70s, Janis Joplin and Stevie Nicks, saying, There's never been anyone like them and there never will be. They're legendary and incredible. Jackson's Instagram from that era is filled with photos of her modern take on the flower child aesthetic. She's pictured rocking actual flowers in her hair with converse on her feet and pairing a tie-dye top with gray leggings. She was also fond of crystals, beads, and the circle sunglasses favored by John Lennon. Paris didn't put her old dreams of becoming an actor on the back burner when she started modeling. In 2017, she shot four episodes of Lee Daniels' Fox series Star. She played a social media maven tasked with snapping PR photos of the show's girl group for an internet campaign. The character had a no-nonsense, take-charge attitude that Jackson said was the opposite of her real personality. For it being like my first real like on-camera acting, I think it's a good way for me to show my acting capabilities. That same year, Paris told Teen Vogue she was also writing music, but had no plans to record anything at the time. Still, 
She wasn't satisfied just being a double threat with her modeling and acting careers. She was also an activist. In fact, she said that activism was more important to her than any of her career pursuits, saying, From a young age, I've always cared about the wellness of animals and the environment. One of the causes close to her heart was the protest against the Dakota Access Pipeline. She gave a shout out to the issue at the Grammys before introducing The Weeknd and Daft Punk, saying, We could use this kind of excitement at a pipeline protest. Jackson has also followed in the footsteps of her godmother, Elizabeth Taylor, by becoming the ambassador of the late actor's Elizabeth Taylor AIDS Foundation. Paris addressed questions about her sexuality via social media in 2018. During a Q&A on her Instagram story, she was asked if she was bisexual, replying, that's what you guys call it, so I guess, but who needs labels? When her response began getting media coverage, she pointed out that it wasn't exactly breaking news that she was a member of the LGBTQ plus community, tweeting, I even mentioned having crushes on girls when I was eight in a magazine before. This seemingly referred to Paris telling Rolling Stone that her father once playfully teased her for said crush. Paris added, I've been caught kissing girls in public. One of those girls was model Cara Delevingne. Because Paris was out and proud, her decision to pose on the cover of Harper's Bazaar Singapore in 2018 raised a few eyebrows. In an opinion piece for Gay Star News, writer Jamie Taberer called Paris a hypocrite, pointing out that gay sex was a criminal act in Singapore, although it has since been legalized. Paris quickly issued an apology on X, posting, I don't want to be hypocritical or hurt anyone, and my support for my fellow LGBTQ plus community comes first before my love for fashion and gratitude for this opportunity. She argued argued that her cover could be viewed as a sign of progress, writing, "...someone that is openly a part of the community, being on the cover in a country against the community, should be celebrated." Paris Jackson was 13 years old when she began learning how to play guitar, but it wasn't until 2018 that she started pursuing a music career in earnest. Music is a, a really safe way to express my thoughts and opinions and feelings without getting absolutely shredded to pieces for it. She and her boyfriend at the time, Gabriel Glenn, teamed up to form a folk rock duo called The Soundflowers. That June, they performed at Canyon Sessions for an audience that included Katherine Jackson. Paris wrote in a since-deleted Instagram post, I can't believe my grandma made it to our second live show ever, and she actually liked it? I was in my pants. On her Instagram story, Paris revealed that she had undergone a painful surgical procedure to have an abscess drained the day before her big performance. Also in 2018, Paris made a cameo in the 30 Seconds to Mars music video for Rescue. Me. In March 2019, Paris and Glenn landed another major gig at the Mint in Los Angeles, where their set included a cover of the Jimmy Buffett classic, Margaritaville. According to TMZ, Paris's mom, Debbie Rowe, was in the audience, as were Chris Brown, her father's close friend, Macaulay Culkin, and Culkin's girlfriend, Brenda Song. According to one insider, Paris and Glenn's relationship was growing just as serious as their musical aspirations. In May 2019, the source told Page Six, they're not planning on getting married soon, but that's the long-term plan. After dating for two years, releasing an EP, and filming their own Facebook Watch series, Unfiltered, Paris Jackson and Gabriel Glenn, Paris and Gabriel broke up in 2020. In the final episode of the series, Glenn admitted that it wasn't easy for him to see Paris getting so much attention when they partnered up. It's, it's weird in this relationship not being the one in the spotlight. Jackson described the two of them as double stubborn and said of their musical partnership, But I can't do this without Gabe. <laughs> I can't see my life without him. Two months after the couple called it quits, Jackson expressed her heartbreak in the song Let Down, the first single she released from her debut solo record, Wilted. But in a statement about her new music, she revealed that she was anything but sad, telling USA Today, I'm excited, I'm nervous, mostly grateful and happy. The freedom to create, not being told what to sing and how to sing it, what to write, it's awesome. It's a gift, it's a blessing. Jackson told Billboard that she was excited about indie rocker Andy Hall producing the album, as she was a huge fan of his band, saying, Manchester Orchestra was the soundtrack to the most vital time in my life in regards to mourning and becoming who I am today. According to Paris, the record's sound was heavily influenced by Radiohead. When Willow Smith interviewed Paris for Red Table Talk in 2021, she revealed that the two of them were longtime friends who bonded over having famous parents, working in the same industries, and struggling with similar issues, including their mental well-being. So who better to play Smith's love interest in her 2022 You're a Stranger music video than Jackson? When Jackson shared a snippet of the video on Instagram, Smith wrote in the comments, Fave music video dream girl. Jackson was also busy writing and recording new music of her own. In a 2023 interview with Allure, she revealed that the EP 
she was working on at the time was inspired by grunge bands of the 90s, including Nirvana and the Smashing Pumpkins, saying, I'm going for a louder sound these days. One example is her single Band-Aid, which has some pretty dark lyrics like, I dream of you when I'm bleeding out. I'm veiny, I'm draining out and done. Jackson's dedication to her craft earned her a performance slot at the Bonnaroo Music Festival in 2023 and the opportunity to go out on tour with Incubus. She was also continuing to get acting roles. In an episode of Swarm, she plays a stripper who performs under the name Halsey. In an interview with People, Paris shared, I try and enjoy every moment regardless of where I'm at. Even if things are tough, I think it's important to still find things to be grateful for. If you or someone you know is struggling or in crisis, help is available. Call or text 988 or chat at 988lifeline.org.